The fourth process of project risk management is called perform quantitative risk analysis, and it's the process of numerically analyzing the effect of identified risks on overall project objectives. This process is performed on risks that have been prioritized by the preceding process, perform qualitative risk analysis, and you have determined that they are or can potentially and substantially impact the project. This process analyzes the effect of those risk events. Now, it's important to note that PERFORM quantitative risk analysis does not always have to be performed. It's really for those risks that we have categorized as high after the PERFORM qualitative risk analysis process. Obviously, spending more time evaluating any high risks will drive costs in terms of more time, budget, and project resources, so it does not need to be done on all risks. Sometimes we skip this process and move right to the plan risk responses process. But when we do need this process, our inputs and outputs are the same, so I'll briefly address those and I'll tell you about the tools and techniques necessary for performing qualitative risk analysis. The inputs of the PERFORM quantitative risk analysis process will all be familiar to you because you've seen them in other processes we've gone over in earlier videos. The inputs include the risk management plan, the cost management plan, the schedule management plan, and the risk register. There are three tools and techniques for the PERFORM quantitative risk analysis process. First, data gathering and representation techniques which can include interviews and probability distributions. Second, quantitative risk analysis and modeling techniques. Let's break this one down into three techniques. First, a sensitivity analysis can help determine the risks with greatest possible impact on the project. The most common means of graphically depicting the results of the sensitivity analysis is the tornado diagram. It's really about changing the model and observing its behavior and it's the best method for the purpose of practical decision making. Sensitivity analysis is very useful when attempting to determine the impact the actual outcome of a particular variable will have if it differs from what was previously assumed. By creating a given set of scenarios, you can determine how changes in one variable or variables will impact the target variable. It's really about evaluating those risks that may pose the greatest threat or present the greatest opportunity to the project. This technique is used within specific boundaries that will depend on one or more input variables, such as the effect that changes in interest rates, in other words, an independent variable, will have on a bond's price. For example, you might create a financial model that will show the bond's price, the dependent variable, given the change in interest rate, independent variable, at that time. The analyst can create a table of predicted bond prices for each of the independent variables. Second, an expected monetary value, or EMV, is a statistical concept that calculates the average outcome when the future includes scenarios that may or may not happen. That is, analysis under uncertainty. A common use of this type of analysis is a decision tree analysis, which you can see here. Let's look at this example. Expected monetary value, or EMV, is a ballpark figure, and just think of it as an average of the best and worst case scenarios. It accounts not only for the dollar figure assigned to each outcome, but also for the likelihood of that outcome occurring. To calculate EMV, multiply the dollar value of each possible outcome by each outcome's chance of occurring, or percentage, and total the results. And a third technique is modeling and simulation. We can simulate a project in a model and translate the specified detailed uncertainties of the project into their potential impact on project objectives. We typically perform simulations using the Monte Carlo technique. In a simulation, we compute the project model many times with the input values chosen at random for each iteration from the probability distributions of these variables. It's really about conducting what-if scenarios on those risks that may pose the greatest threat or present the greatest opportunity on the project, and seeing how any change to a project parameter will impact the project, for example, in terms of cost or schedule. 
You start this by first identifying the uncertain variables, also called random variables. While there's some uncertainty in almost all variables in a business model, we want to focus on variables where the range of values is significant. You then plug these uncertain inputs into the model to produce the value of the output. For outputs, we want the same thing we wanted from the PERFORM qualitative risk analysis process, and that's an update to our risk register with a list of those risks that pose the greatest threat or present the greatest opportunity to the project.